folks, welcome back to Discerning Spirits, the show where we talk about Enneagram types over cocktails. I'm your bartender, Dan Prevett. And I'm your bar patron, Colton Simmons. And today we're talking about type three, the Achiever. Dan, what are we drinking today? For the Achiever, I could think of no better cocktail than one of my very favorites, the Daiquiri. The Daiquiri is so classic, so simple, and so good it's hard not to love. Kind of like our type threes. Beautiful. It gets the job done every time. And what I love about it is everybody can achieve it. <laughs> I had fun with that. That felt oh, good to me. It was so good. We're gonna start with a white rum, a little bit of sugar, and fresh squeezed lime juice. And that's it. All right, everybody. The type three achiever, the daiquiri. Let's do Cheers. it. Cheers. Mmm. Feels so dainty. I Ooh. love this drink that so is... much. Man. So, daiquiris are such an interesting drink in the craft cocktail community and That's in the cool. culture because, first of all, daiquiris are so wildly misunderstood. You talk about daiquiris and people picture blenders and yeah. three foot yards on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. Yeah. Like it's it's thought of as like kind of just a crummy party cocktail. Or like an old lady in Delaware kind of thing. Yeah, it's you know? it's 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 one of those cocktails that has a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. We'll get to more on that later with the type <laughs> seven, but but saving that. But what's great about a daiquiri is that it's actually a really incredible <sighs> cocktail. And it can have so many different flavors depending on the ingredients. Mm. Because it is just those three ingredients, rum, lime, and sugar, Yeah, it comes down to what the bartender chooses to do with it. It comes down to what kind of rum you wanna use, yeah. how fresh the lime juice is, what kind of sugar you're using, how they make the syrup. So honestly, what's kind of fun about it as a bartender is a lot of the time bartenders will test bars they've never been to yeah. with a daiquiri. If they're at a bar and they can tell that it's a craft cocktail bar, they'll just order, let me get a daiquiri, bartender's choice. Give me choice. one of those 101 cocktails to just, see what you're doing. Just give me like, I just wanna see like what kind of a bar we're dealing with. Yeah. And I've seen bartenders be like, that's an amazing daiquiri, I'll get something off the menu, or mm. that's not for me, I'll have a beer and a shot. <laughs> I've seen it go both ways. Yeah. So when we're talking about the achiever, I mean, it's pound for pound, one of the most popular Enneagram types out there, yeah. forces of nature. They're hard not to love, but they can also go pretty wrong. Very true. How do you think I did with this one? I think you did great. I mean, this is super tasty. It's gonna be hard not to just throw back. I'm also married to a three, so I feel like I have a very personal connection to the three. Yeah. And my sister-in-law is also a three, so I feel like I've seen that spectrum of threeness from the blended party daiquiri on bourbon street <laughs> to the refined you know sure and we will we will leave it to the viewer to decide which one is which <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i love this cocktail you've taught me so much about cocktails over the years and i've done that same bartender test before like let's just see what this daiquiri is like and see if they can do anything else so i think it's perfect i mean i think when you crush a daiquiri it's very much like the three in that people just love it yeah people tend to love threes I mean, they can become what you want, what you need, depending on the environment, and they're driven to be efficient. Mm -hmm. So you got a few ingredients that you have to be really efficient with. I think it's perfect. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. They can be what you need and what you want. <laughs> that seems like it can go either really great or really wrong. Yeah. So let's talk about what are those kind of core traits that you can look for when you're like, I'm pretty sure that person's a three or I'm pretty sure I'm a three. Yeah. Threes are just attractive folks. I mean, physically and interpersonally, they are driven to be successful, like the name, you know, mm -hmm. references, but it's based on being effective. So they want to be seen as like, I'm capable of doing whatever needs to be done here. Not so much in the two way that serves people, 
the three wants to be effective within a system. Mm -hmm. So they want to climb ladders. It's kind of that that need to be needed that the two has, but it's more so like I want to climb these this rung in my career and elevate my title and elevate my pay and just be seen as someone who knows how to get the job done. And so because of that need, they can be a little political. Mm -hmm. They can be a little shifty. Uh, well, and I mean, a lot of famous threes are politicians. Yes, yeah. because they're kind of chameleons to mm -hmm. some degree. Uh, their spirit animal is the peacock. It's just the kind of brilliant. Yeah. Little showy. Uh, little showy. Um, yeah, but they, they want to stand out in a subtle way that's not off-putting. That's their goal. They mm -hmm. want to be remembered. So when they leave the party, it's not that they were boisterous and loud. It's mm -hmm. just that they were really great to talk to. They're in that heart triad. So shame is a really, really big deal for them. And their emotions are stifled to a degree where they're almost not aware of them, mm. which makes them really good at just becoming something else in any given space that they're in. I think threes are one of the most fascinating types to me because I don't think I've ever met a three I didn't like. I think I, as as uh. just my personality is I, I tend to be very suckered by threes. I and, and <laughs> it's not are. always it's it's not always a suckering. Yeah. Like sometimes it's it's bona fide. Yeah. It's yeah. legitimate. But I'm a real uh I am really buying what threes are selling. I love like the the appearance, the confidence, yeah. the swagger, whatever it is. But what's fascinating to me about threes is that their their core folly is deceit. Deceit. Is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean so all of the, the Enneagram has tons of religious roots and we, most people heard of the seven deadly sins. And so the three and the six were the two that were added in later, six being fear and three being deceit, not a part of the original seven. Uh, but yeah, they bring a very unique ability to fit in different places because again, this is why Brene Brown, I think has had such a huge career explosion. She started tapping into shame and we live in a world of uh, shame. Especially in America, we are driven by threes. We love, we're, most people in America are impressed and are buying what threes are selling because we have the American dream, big house, white picket fence, nice cars, good job. That is the threes vision mm -hmm. for a life well lived. Yeah. And so we do buy into that, but the three are, is driven to do that often from a place of shame and not knowing a deep sense of self-worth that comes from a place outside of success, mm -hmm. outside of material approval. So that's kind of where that deceit comes from, because a lot of times you can get far in life by being deceptive. It's mm -hmm. kind of that house of cards truth, you know, where you're like, wow, if you really deceive people, you can get so far in this life. Yeah, it's tempting. Um, we were joking around about a knight's tale before we started shooting this. And we were like, it's kind of a bad moral because he just deceives people until he gets what he wants. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah. Beautiful story. Love that movie. Well, there's a whole there's a whole nother track that we could get into with this. And I don't want to get too deep, but it is, um, you know, Richard Rohr, who we've mm -hmm. talked about and we'll probably talk about further in this video series. Yeah. Um, Richard Rohr compares Enneagram types to different countries. Yeah. And the the ethos of the United States is it's that three. three ethos. It's yeah. sort of like appearance over everything else. Well, they also believe, you know you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mm. It's kind of that Protestant work ethic of, if you just try hard, you'll succeed. Yeah. So I don't understand what you're talking about with these inherent iniquities in society. Just, just keep trying hard. So overall, the three sounds like a very outwardly appealing type, kind of no matter what. Yeah. What does a three that has gotten off track and is sort of in those unhealthy spaces, how are they going to appear and how are yeah. they going to appear to themselves? Yeah. So threes, when they are not dealing well, not coping well, will go to nine, which uh, the, the weakness of a nine is sloth. Mm -hmm. And so nines go from this hyperactive, successful, energetic, you know, making moves in the workplace to just shutting down watching Netflix for eight hours, eating a pint of ice cream, having a few drinks and just numbing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hitting the pen and going to bed. It, it, they, they have such a hard time dealing with failure and mm -hmm. critique. Uh, they often will turn failures into some sort of success. Like, oh yeah, that movie bombed, but you know what? It got me in connection with that so-and-so. And then the next project mm -hmm. was a win. So actually that project wasn't a failure, it was a success. 
And when they realize, no, those are actually failures. I'm actually not who I say I am. They just kind of crumble and go inward and want to isolate mm. because so much of their approval is external. They have a hard time wanting to come out into the outside world once that reality has crumbled in some degree, especially the more public the failure is yeah. or the more personal that struggle is, the more it's just like, let me just curl up in a ball and hide. So what is the countermeasure to that? So threes in health or integration, as it's phrased, go to six and six is the loyalist. Sixes are like the best team players. They are so committed. They're so humble. They're so down for whatever you need. Um, similar to twos in that aspect, but they're very committed and they don't need praise. And so when threes can get outside themselves and recognize that a lot of their identity is tied to success and personal success, like being recognized, getting the first place trophy, when they can shelve that and just go, I'm going to work for this cause or this company because I love it. And, you know, if Dan gets all the praise, so be it. Dan's a great dude. That's what three is going to six looks like. Mm -hmm. They're still effective. They're still hard workers. They're still energetic. But there's a difference in what they're striving for. They're, they're almost not thinking of themselves so much anymore. And they wouldn't necessarily say that they want to succeed because they want their brand to be recognized. Threes aren't as openly narcissistic as maybe like a four might be. Yeah. Uh, they hide it really well. But when they're healthy and they deal with that kind of narcissism and they go to six and it's, it's almost like the world, they just are rooting for everyone to get a win. Yeah. And if they have a part in it, great. The reason I thought of the daiquiri for this, in addition to that, is because so often, I think when we think of bad daiquiris, when we think of that, like, kind of that party daiquiri, yeah. that blended daiquiri on a beach or that huge yard of a daiquiri on the Vegas Strip, yeah, it's too much of a good thing. Well, you also know when someone's trying to be something you want, they think you want them to be, you know, right. when someone's kind of salesy. Yeah. That's what threes and their downfall can feel like. We're like, you're just trying to tell me everything. You're trying to like, yes, and everything I said. Yeah. I'm like, I like being like, yeah, beer's great. Oh, I just went to Tahiti. Oh, I just went to Tahiti too. It's just like, wh yeah. what's going on here? It's a lot of effort. I need, I don't mind if we disagree on some of these things. Uh, and I feel like that's the daiquiri's ability to shape shift. Yeah. Be iced, be classy, be a hot mess, whatever. Well, and I think that you know, like, I mean, not to, not to overstretch the metaphor, but a really good daiquiri is kind of like just enough drink to make you be like, I'll, I'll have another. I'll have another. Can yeah. I have another one of those? Yeah, yeah, those, yeah. You know, as opposed to like, if you're drinking more than one yard of daiquiri on <laughs> the, the Vegas Strip. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. You're out for a good time. So the three sits in an interesting place. Yes. Right in the middle of the heart triad. Right. You've got twos right next to it, mm -hmm. incredibly bubbly and positive. You got fours right next to it, sort of <laughs> famously tend to be bummers. Yeah. So what does that look like in relation as wings? So yeah, like you said, threes are in the middle of the heart triad and that's called being the impinged type because no matter which way they go, they're in the heart triad. So they're always stuck in their feelings to mm -hmm. some degree. Uh, when threes have that two wing, they're a lot more willing to be social a little bit less of the career asp aspiration they're called the charmer so you know like the way that twos always know what someone needs threes kind of use that intuition to be more intuitively what people need socially uh very warm a little bit more likely to sacrifice a career for a domestic life uh threes with the four wing though are called the professional and they take that individualism of the four and push their career forward. They're more likely to postpone having kids or a family, especially women, and they'll go after their career mm -hmm. as opposed to the domestic life because they're driven by a little bit more of an identity that needs to be affirmed as unique and special in their efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way that plays out. Huge generality, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the difference in those two, two wings. All right, folks, there you have it. Type three, the achiever and the daiquiri. I don't know how else to say it. This is a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. And if you are at, whether it's your favorite bar or a bar you've never been to, give one a shot. It'll either become your favorite drink or you'll know to just get a can of beer and a shot of whiskey. <laughs> either way, it's not a bad move. Cheers. Cheers.